Now let's see the RFQ. Let's uh, calculate the fields in the RFQ in the region where the beam is there. So the beam is in this very small region of the RFQ. So this is the beam aperture. The beam passes through this region. So the wave equation in free space as we have already seen before is del square E plus k square E is equal to 0. So we can write this as del 2 E by del x square plus del 2 E by del y square plus del 2 E by del z square plus 2 pi by lambda square E is equal to 0. So in the RFQ, the displacement of the electrodes from the axis is very small as compared to the RF wavelength. So we can see that uh, the region in which the beam is there. So uh, if you see the displacement of the veins from the axis, this is very small as compared to the RF wavelength. So A, this aperture is very very small as compared to lambda. So in this equation, since lambda is very large as compared to the dimensions in x, y and z, this term can be ignored. So this is known as the quasi-static approximation. So the quasi-static approximation is valid in the RFQ and the wave equation reduces to the Laplace's equation. So we just need to solve for the RFQ fields del square E is equal to 0. Just the Laplace's equation needs to be solved. So del square E is equal to 0. Now we know that uh, del cross del cross E is equal to del of divergence E minus del square E. Now since there enough charge free region divergence of E is equal to 0 and del square E is already equal to 0. So this term goes to 0. So we are left with curl of curl of E is equal to 0. So this implies that E can be written as the gradient of a scalar. So u, so we can write E is equal to minus del u where u is a scalar potential. So therefore in the quasi-static approximation, the time dependent electric field components are derivable from a scalar potential. We can write divergence of E is equal to minus del square u and this is equal to 0. So using uh, cylindrical polar coordinates, the time dependent scalar potential is written as, so we have this uh, potential which is space dependent and this is the time dependence. The fields are time dependent, so we have sine omega t plus phi. Now Vr theta z is a solution of the Laplace's equation given in cylindrical coordinates by this expression. The RFQ potential of this structure is a solution of the Laplace's equation in the 3D domain. Now for the RFQ the following boundary conditions are valid. So the potential at some location r theta z is the same as the potential at r minus theta z. So the, whatever is the potential here the potential at this location is also minus theta is also the same. Similarly v r theta z is equal to v r theta plus pi z. Again, the potential at this location and this location are the same. So with this boundary conditions, we can write a general solution of the uh, this equation. So this is the general KT potential function from which the electric field in the vicinity of the beam can be calculated. So this is a general equation. Now for uh, simplicity, let us just consider the first two terms of this potential. So we select only the lowest order terms from the general solution for the potential. So we take S is equal to 0 here and S is equal to 0 and N is equal to 1 here. So just the lowest terms. So we get what we get is V R theta Z is A0 R square cos 2 theta plus A10 I0 KR cos K Z. So this is known as the two term potential. Here A0 and A10 are constants that can be determined by the electrode geometry and I0 is the modified vessel function. So this is a simplified form of the potential for the RFQ. So this is known as the two term potential function. Now let's say at this location Z is equal to 0. So here we have at theta is equal to 0. So let's take this location as theta is equal to 0. So the horizontal vein is at a distance a from the axis. So at theta is equal to 0, that is at the horizontal vein tip, we have v is equal to v0 by 2. This At this instant of time, this is 
at a potential V0 by 2 and R is equal to A. So, we substitute in this uh, expression V is equal to V0 by 2 and R is equal to A and theta is equal to 0. So, we get V0 by 2 is equal to minus A0 A square plus A10 I0 K and Z is equal to 0 here. Now, at again Z is equal to 0 theta is equal to pi by 2. So, at this location, so we get for the vertical vane tip V is equal to now minus V0 by 2 and here R is equal to MA. So, when the horizontal vane is close to the axis, the vertical vane is away from the axis. So, we get minus V0 by 2 is equal to minus A0 MA square plus A10 I0 KMA. So, from here we can solve these two equations and find out the values of the two constants A0 and A10. So, simplifying we get the value of A0 which is V0 by 2 A square I0 KA plus I0 KMA divided by M square I0 KA plus I0 KMA. Similarly, A10 is V0 by 2 M square minus 1 M square I0 KA plus I0 KMA. Now, this A10 is the acceleration parameter. So, if the uh, it depends upon the value of m. If modulation is equal to 1, so that means both the horizontal vane and the vertical vane are equidistant from the axis. So, in that case, this term goes to 0. So, there is no acceleration. As m is increased greater than 1, so uh, the acceleration parameter increases and there is acceleration. Now, it is convenient to define dimensionless constants x and a as, so this term we define as x and this term we define as a. So, this is a is the acceleration efficiency and uh, x is the focusing parameter. So, now we can write a0 as x v0 by 2 a square and a10 can be written as a v0 by 2. So, then the complete time dependent potential is we can substitute the values of A0 and A10 in the two term potential and then for the time dependent poten uh, potential we can include sin omega t plus phi and we get this as the complete time dependent potential. So, here the time dependent voltages on the horizontal and vertical electrodes are V0 sin omega t plus phi by 2 and minus V0 sin omega t phi by 2 respectively. So, this is the complete time dependent potential where x is given by this, this is the focusing parameter and a is given by this, this is the acceleration parameter. So, in Cartesian coordinates now x can be written as r cos theta and y is r sin theta. So, if you substitute x and y here uh, in place of r, we get this expression in terms of Cartesian coordinates. So, uh, now, electric field can be found from the expression E is equal to minus del U. So, uh, differentiating this, we, we can calculate Ex, Ey and Ez. Now, Ez is responsible for acceleration and in Ex and Ey, we see there are two terms. So, the first term uh, is responsible for focusing or defocusing. So, we know that it, since it is a quadrupole, so it will focus in one direction, defocus in the other direction. So you see that the first term in Ex and Ey, they have opposite signs. So if it is focusing in the x direction, it is defocusing in the other direction. And then the second term is due to the modulation. So here the z term, it is in the z direction and this, uh, it, it includes the z uh, uh, variable and this causes defocusing in the transverse direction. So, as we have already seen earlier that uh, the RF field causes some defocusing in the uh, transverse direction. So, EZ component provides the accelerating force on the beam. The first term of EX and EY is associated with quadrupole focusing and the second term leads to transverse RF defocusing force that acts on the beam when the phase phi is chosen for longitudinal focusing. So, when uh, phase phi is chosen for longitudinal focusing, it should lie between 0 and minus pi by 2. 
now vein geometry so how is the vein modulated in the z direction so geometry of the electrodes is specified from the equipotential surfaces that are at a potential so transverse cross sections are approximately hyperbola so you can see from here the transverse cross sections are approximately hyperbola so you can always approximate it um, in order to reduce the peak surface fields and for ease of fabrication now at z is equal to beta s lambda by 4 that is halfway through the unit cell the rfq has exact quadrupolar symmetry and the tips of the x and y electrodes have radius equal to r0 is equal to a under root uh, a divided by under root of x so in practice the electrode contours must deviate from the ideal shape to control the peak surface field and to facilitate machining however at the tips that is at theta is equal to 0 and pi for horizontal electrodes and at pi by 2 and 3 pi by 2 for the vertical electrodes so these can still be chosen to correspond to the correct equipotential of the two term potential function so at the tip uh, the x tip is that y is equal to 0 so this is given by you can put this as equal to 1 is equal to x by a square x square plus a i 0 k x cos k z so this will give you the profile in x and z direction similarly for the y tip x is equal to 0 and we get minus 1 is equal to minus x by a square y square plus a i 0 k y cos k z so this will give you the profile of the vein in the yz direction okay so this uh, this rfq these veins are in a cavity the, it is we utilize the electric fields of the electromagnetic waves in a cavity so the veins are placed inside a cavity and the operating mode in the rfq is a te210 like mode so we'll try to understand the mode in the rfq so when I say TE210 like mode, remember the TEMN0 mode cannot exist in a cavity. So we will see how this type of mode is generated and why it is called a TE210 like mode. It is not a TE210 mode, it is a TE210 like mode. So let us first analyze the transverse direction. So let us consider a TE21P so this is the variation in theta direction so two full period variations of the fields in the theta directions and this is one corresponds to the variation in the radial direction so so this is the te21p mode so if we plot er with theta from 0 to 2 pi so let's start from this point this is point 1 so we see here that the radial field is 0 so here there is no field in the radial direction the field is all in the theta direction now as we move from here to here at point 2 the field radial field is maximum somewhere here and then again goes to 0 so the radial field is maximum somewhere here and at point 2 it goes to 0 again as we move ahead the radial field is maximum at this location in the opposite direction and it is going to 0 at point 3 so again at point 3 it is 0 in between it was maximum but in the opposite direction again as we move from point 3 to point 4 we can see that the electric field is uh, the radial component of electric field is 0 at this location but in between it was a maximum so again like this and then as we go from point 4 to point 1 again the field is 0 again at point 1 and then maximum somewhere in between. So this is if we see the variation in ER in theta from 0 to 2 pi. So we see that there are two full period variations in the field in the field. So this corresponds to m is equal to 2. Now if we see the variation of BZ field. So we will have a BZ field here a bz field here a bz field here and bz field here so if we see so it is coming out of the screen so the bz field if you see the variation with uh, with r from 0 to rc we see that the variation is like this so there is one zero in the field 
at r is equal to 0 but this is not counted so since there are no more zeros n takes the minimum value that is n is equal to 1 so in a te21 type of mode in a cavity the fields are as if in a electric quadrupole so you can see that the fields are as if in a electric quadrupole it is as if this is at a positive this point is at a positive potential this point is at a negative potential again this point is at a positive potential this is at a negative potential so the fields field lines are originating from the positive potential and moving towards the negative potential so this is like the fields are as if in a electric quadrupole now if we introduce veins in this region so this positive potential here shifts to because uh, the electrodes will be equipotential so this uh, positive potential shifts to this surface here so we have introduced now veins here so we have this at a positive potential this is at a negative potential this is at a positive potential and this is at a negative potential now by introducing the four poles or veins in the cavity the quadrupolar electric field becomes more concentrated near the axis so in this region the field becomes more concentrated so you can see here in this region near the axis near the where the beam will go through so the field has become this quadrupolar field has become more concentrated in this region also now because you have put in a vein they provide a surface that can be modulated to produce the longitudinal electric field now this is a te mode in a te mode there is no field along the z direction and for acceleration you need a field along the z direction so the field cannot be produced unless you have a surface that you can modulate to produce the field in the z direction so by introducing these veins they provide a surface that can be now modulated in the z direction to produce longitudinal electric fields so we have seen that a TE210 mode cannot exist in the cavity because if P is equal to 0 then Bz this implies that Bz is constant along Z from 0 to L. So let's say we have a cavity here of length L. So a TE mode means we have a Bz field like this. So and Bz is P is equal to 0 so Bz is constant. So you, since it is a cavity it has to be closed at both ends now when you close it with the end plate at this region and at this end that is at z is equal to 0 and at z is equal to l this magnetic field becomes the normal component of magnetic field to this surface to both these surfaces so since it is a normal component it has to go to 0 so since bz is 0 at z is equal to 0 and z is equal to l if bz is to be constant now it is 0 here and here and p is equal to 0 implies that bz is constant so if bz is to be constant along the length so bz has to be 0 so for a te mode already ez is equal to 0 and if p is equal to 0 then bz also goes to 0 so and we know that all the field components all the transverse field components that is er e theta br and b theta they depend on ez and bz only so they will also be all zero so all fields will be zero and there will be no mode so therefore p is equal to zero there is no mode in the cavity so p starts for from one for a te mode and a te mn0 mode cannot exist in the cavity but for the RFQ, we require a TE210 mode. We need a field. So if these are the four veins of the cavity. We need a field that is constant along Z. But what we actually get is a TE211 mode in which the fields are, there is one half period variation in the uh, fields along the Z direction. So that the fields go to zero at both the ends to satisfy the boundary condition so let's say we have uh, these veins here these are the two vertical veins and these are the two horizontal veins now if we close it with an end plate here so this is the bz this is the bz field in the two quadrants so if we close it with an end plate here this field has to go to zero here at the end plate because it's the normal component of field 
and then what we will get is a TE211 mode. So this is shown here. These are the two vertical veins. So modulations are not shown here. They will be there but they are not shown here. So these are the two vertical veins. This is the bottom vein. This is the top vein. This is the beam axis. Now if you close it with a end wall at this region here, this is the normal component and hence the magnetic field has to go to zero. Now we want a field which is which should not vary like this, it should be flat. Because if this field is flat, if BZ field is flat, the fields generated, the EZ component generated here will also be um, flat here. So it will in all the quadrant, in all the um, cells it will be, it will have the same uh, magnitude. So what can be done is that the uh, so uh, the vein is not directly terminated at the end wall instead some space is left between the vein and the end wall so there we leave a space between the vein and the end wall and in addition provide some undercuts in the vein so undercuts are provided in the veins in the end region to allow magnetic field lines to bend and pass over to the next quadrant so the magnetic field lines are coming like this now since they do not see the end wall immediately, they do not go to zero. Instead, there is some space between the vein and the end wall. So the magnetic field lines can bend over and pass over to the next quadrant. So this magnetic field line, it comes here. Now there is a space between the uh, vein and the end wall. So there is some space here. So they can bend over and move on to the next quadrant like this. So here, when they bend over, this magnetic field is the, uh, it, uh, so it is not the normal component of magnetic field, it is, uh, so it is allowed, this component of magnetic field is allowed. So additionally, veins do not terminate at the end walls, there is some space between the veins and the end walls. So if you see the cross section at the end, so these are the four veins and uh, there is some space between the veins and the end wall. So magnetic field lines are coming like this and then they turn over the veins and move into the next quadrant. Similarly, uh, they turn over this vein and move on to the next quadrant. So again the same thing is shown here from the side view and this is the top view. So this is the vein, this is the end wall. There is a gap between the vein and the end wall. So the magnetic field lines have space and they turn over into the next quadrant. So by providing undercut in the vein at the end region of the RFQ, the TE211 mode is modified into a TE210 like mode. So in a TE211 mode, field was like this. Now here, the because of providing this undercut, the field, the Z component of the field still goes to zero here. But in the center region, it is more or less flat like a TE210 like mode. So that is why it is known as a TE210 like mode. So in general in the RFQ the TE211 mode is modified into a TE210 like mode. So this is the picture of the RFQ. So you can see here these are the four veins and uh, so there is an undercut provided here which you can see here. So the magnetic field line in this quadrant will be like this. So it comes here and there will be an end plate here but there is a gap between the vein and the end plate so the magnetic field lines will bend over and pass over to the next quadrant, bend over and pass over to the next quadrant. So this shows the top view here, so this is the magnetic field lines, they bend over and pass on to the next quadrant. Similarly here they bend over and pass over to the next quadrant, so veins do not extend to the end plates and in addition they are cut to facilitate turning of the magnetic field lines. So thus the operating mode in the RFQ is a TE210 like mode. So thus we utilize the fields of the electromagnetic wave in a cavity which is excited in a TE210 like mode with veins added to accelerate the charged particles in a RFQ. So we can summarize now. The DC beam can be injected into an RFQ. The RFQ first bunches the beam with more than 90% efficiency and then accelerates it. The beam is focused using the electric quadrupole in the RFQ. The operating mode in the RFQ is a TE210 light mode. 
So since it's a TE mode, there is no EZ component of the field which is required for acceleration. So the longitudinal component or the EZ component of electric field is generated in the RFQ by modulating the surface of the veins along the longitudinal direction. The RFQ is a RF linear that can efficiently bunch focus and accelerate low energy beam. So it does all the three functions. It bunches the beam, it focuses the beam and it can accelerate the beam at low energies. So it is particularly useful for high current beams because the quadrupole focusing in the RFQ is there throughout the length of the RFQ. So it's particularly useful for focusing high current beams where space charge effects are so, uh, let me just speak about the LEPA accelerator at uh, BRC, which is the front end LINAC for the Indian ADS system. So, as we saw in the first lecture, the accelerator driven system needs a high intensity, high current accelerator. So, typically of energies 1 GV. So, this, uh, uh, this proton beam goes and hits a spallation target and lots of neutrons are produced. So, they, and then there is a a reactor, a nuclear reactor, reactor which is subcritical. So subcritical means it is deficient in neutrons. The additional neutrons required to sustain the chain reaction in this subcritical reactor is then provided by this accelerator. So for such an accelerator, so it is planned to build this accelerator in three phases and the first phase of it, LEPA, is being built at BRC. So this is a 20 MeV proton LINAC. So it consists of an ion source and then there is an RFQ. So the ion source accelerates, uh, so ion source gives beam of 50 kV. Then the RFQ accelerates it to 3 MeV and then followed by a DTL which accelerates it to 20 MeV. So in between there are solenoid magnets here for focusing the beam uh, before the beam enters into the RFQ and then there are quadrupole magnets to focus the beam in between the RFQ and the RFQ limit. So here is the picture of the uh, LEPA at BRC. So there is an ion source here which is not seen. Then this, there is an RFQ. This is the RFQ. There are solenoid magnets. So this is a solenoid magnet which is used for focusing the beam. There is a drift tube linac here. In between there are quadrupole magnets for focusing the beam. And these structures that you can see here, these are waveguides that are used for feeding the RF power or for transporting the electromagnetic waves, high power electromagnetic waves into the cavity, into the RFQ cavity. So there is a klystron sitting in the next room which produces uh, high power RF. So this is transported through the waveguide into the RFQ where fields are set up in the TE210 like pattern and the beam is then accelerated. So we have an ion source at 50 kV, the RFQ which accelerates from 50 kV to 3 MeV and then there is a drift tube LINAC which accelerates 3 MeV to 20 MeV. And with this we come to an end uh, to the end of module 2.